Alright guys, ready to go? Oh. Jimmy, let's get to class a little faster next time, okay? I mean, it's not that hard, okay? You're coming from Mrs. Coleman's room. It's not that long a walk, okay? Alright, class. So, anyway, let's review exponential functions. We talked about this today, right? So, here we go, exponential functions, okay? We have slopes always increasing, and this is under the assumption that there's going to be nothing that's going to be keeping something from growing, okay? We all understand that? All right, very good. All right, anyway. All right, now, let me ask the question here. Does anybody know how an enzyme functions as the temperature increases? <laughs> oh, of course. Claire? It increases and then peaks off. There we go. Okay, oh, here we go. All right, so. You got this thing starting out slowly, we're increasing, we're going to increase to a point, and we're going to have horizontal tangents at y equals zero, and y equals k, where k is our carrying capacity, right? So, now, anybody know what the derivative of this is going to look like? Any idea? No? Okay, anyway. All right, so, we talked about the derivative with respect to n. n is going to be defined as the number of uh, animals in the population, okay? So our derivative is going to look like this, an R max times the n, where R max is going to be the maximum rate of change, which is going to be right in here, times a k minus n over n. All right, any questions? Wait, Mr. Thompson, are you sure that's right? Let me, let me look here for you. Let's see here. Oh, oh, no, I'm wrong here. There you go. Okay. All right. Now, let's talk about the limit here for a second, okay? If we took the limit as x, whoop, 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 caught myself right there. K approaches n of a d n d t. Anybody know what that's going to equal? No. 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 All right. Zero. Okay. Hey, got any grapes? Yo, 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 clam dog. How's it going? Oh, supply curve right there. You know what that means. More money, more money, more money. Mr. Bastien, I've been looking all over for you. Who, who it's are you? To, it's time to go home now. What, what, what are you talking about? I'm home. Terrible, Where, where's home? Terrible. Where's home? We gotta go home. No, no, yes, we have to go home. Yeah. All right, so now let's talk about that. This in a little more layman's terms, okay? We're going to refer to this logistic growth model as an S-curve, okay? We've got the whole S thing going on here, okay? So this S-curve right here, okay? It's going to start out not very steep. It's going to increase to its peak steepness, and then it's going to level out up top, okay? Now, all we got to know about this is that because this is getting steeper in here, okay, we're having uh, you know, greater reproduction, and as it starts to level out, okay, that's because there's more predators and they're eating on each other. Maybe uh, the food supply has gone down. That's why it's leveling out, okay? Now, the other thing we want to know about this is it's not an exact science here, okay? All we're going to be talking about is a whole bunch of points that have been plotted. And what they're going to do is create a line of best fit or a regression curve that's going to look just like the logistic growth model we were talking about, okay? Now, two more terms to keep in mind. One is K selection. And the other is R selection. Oh, yeah, my case, I'll call the math teacher. Okay. So K selection right here, okay, is density independent. And R selection is going to be density dependent. Now, this is going to be talked about in the homework because this is in the next section. We're going to talk about it tomorrow. 53.4, okay? Make sure you get those for tomorrow. Wait, why? Oh. For the love of God, just stop it, okay? All right? Right here, okay? Make sure you get the homework, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. You guys are dismissed. Thursday, who cares? 
Every Jimmy. day is a party day. Jimmy. Mom, calm down. No, get off the phone. About the get platform. off the phone. Honestly, I'm going to do less work Jimmy, than Bridget. Jimmy, you have 16 in biology. You need to get off the phone. I, 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 right I, I have to Let's deal with go. my mom. She's Let's nagging at me for some reason. Again, it's constant nagging. What? what, what? No, for 16 biology, we need to get oh, back okay. to that too. Yeah, I didn't say a little bit. Yeah. No. I, what was his name? Ernest G. Him. Him. Oh, I can't think what? of what. Ernest G. Hemming. That's it. Hemming. That's the one. And that's the one we Who cares about his name? No, we He's not a get complete back. nerd. No, we need to get back to that. This you is need ridiculous. It. You need this it. is love no, of God. You need it. For the love of God. You need it. Oh, yes. Come in, please. Oh, well, uh, Mr. Gencarelli, it's about time. You said 4 o'clock, I believe, and it's um, 6.30, sir. Yeah. Sorry about that. Mr. Gencarelli, please try to be a little more punctual. Well, I was just busy doing it. So I, Mr. Gencarelli, I do not care, Mr. Gencarelli. Friends are not very important. You see, I'm doing just fine here with my friend, the computer, okay? Oh, yes. Let's crack open our textbooks. I believe we're talking about Chapter 53, Section 5, since me, Ernest G. Hemingway, wrote this very textbook. Okay, sir. Yeah, that, that is right, Mr. Gencarelli. So, let us begin. Density independence. Yeah. All that this very fandangled term, as you kids say, is the birth rate or death rate does not change as the popu population density changes. Okay. So all that means is that birth rate and death rate will remain the same, okay? Does that make sense? All right, that thank you very much. Sense. Now, density dependence, on the other hand, is when the birth rate or the death rate will rise and fall with population density changes, okay? okay. Very simple. Now, let's talk about some different density-dependent population regulators. This is one of my personal favorites. I worked my first doctorate on this one. It's a very good topic, very good topic. Now, please keep in mind that all of the things that we'll be talking about are regulation of a negative feedback, okay? And all that means is that the end product is going to build up and slow down the process of, of increasing the population. So, first one to talk about is the competition for resource. Please, please keep that. Thank you. All competition for resources. Now, what that means is that you got all these animals, and they're trying to fight animals or plants. They're trying to fight for the same resources and lands. So they're going to be fighting, and if you have too many of them, they're not going to be able to have enough, so they're going to die off. And that's going to give you the fluctuations. We're going to talk about that when we talk about population dynamics, Mr. Jankarelli. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about territoriality. It kind of goes right into competition for resources, or if you have too many of the same. Uh, species in the same environment, they won't all be able to survive. Some of them will have to die off naturally, Mr. Jankarelli. So please keep that in mind. It's very important they go together. Now, a couple other things to keep in mind. Mr. Jankarelli. Yes, sir. Please remain focused on the, on the topic, yes, please. I, I would very much appreciate that. This is near and dear to my heart. Oh, okay, thank topic. you very much. This wait, 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 wait a second. Did my mom say that I'm almost done with the session? Is uh, Mr. Jack Gorilla, I think you're in here until 8 o'clock, and right now it's only 6.32, so I think we're, we got a little more time. Oh, we so, got great time together. Yes, we got, a, we got a lot of very, very, very nice time together. Anyway, disease. If a population has a very has a very high rate of disease, Mr. Jack Gorilla, please sit up. I do not ask for much, except your money and your time. Thank you very much. So disease, all right? Population has a lot of disease in the species. What that's going to result in is some of the population dying off, which is going to control the population. It's a way of negative feedback because we've been talking about. And now let's talk about toxic waste. And this is one of my personal favorites. I did my first doctorate sit down. This is very interesting stuff. So when you talk about yeast fermentation, let me get out the study for you. This is really some interesting stuff here. So when we talk about different forms of toxic waste, we talk about yeast. And when with yeast, it, Mr. Giancarelli, I, I know technology is very important in society, but not right now when we're talking about biology. What so if you'd please that, put that away. What technology? Um, um, I, I, uh, that new fandangled iPhone, I believe it is called, sir. Um, mm -hmm. thank, thank you. Thank you. Now, let's focus on the material, yeah, now, shall we? Okay. So anyway, toxic waste and yeast fermentation. So when we're making alcohol, the yeast needs to ferment, and as a byproduct, they produce ethanol. And as this ethanol accumulates, it'll eventually shut down because of the toxic waste buildup in the yeast. Very important That's to know. Okay. This book right here. Very nice. Yep. 
Yeah, that's because I wrote it. Sorry, the exact same thing going on. I'm just checking it. So, last thing I want to talk about is intrinsic factors for negative feedback. Intrinsic, intrinsic factors. Those are physiological factors that occur in the species or population. They different. Sound like fun. Yes, different anatomical changes can result in negative feedback and result in the population increasing or decreasing. Mr. Jenkarelli. Mm -hmm. Mr. Jenkarelli, please focus. We don't have that much longer. <laughs> Mr. Jenkarelli, do I need to get your mother in here? Not, no, 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 no. Now, just making sure. All right. Two more topics to cover here, Mr. Jenkarelli. Population dynamics. Yes. Population dynamics, very simple, simply, is how biotic and abiotic factors affect population living size. Living and non-living. Yes, living and non-living. That is very good, Mr. Jenkarelli. I'm very impressed. And, and as I was saying, population size can vary over time. We were talking about that when we were talking about the negative feedback. So as these population size changes, it's going to run in a cycle. So the population will be very high, then very low, very high, very low, very high, very low. You get the picture? Mm -hmm. Oh, very good. Oh, very good. So some, some sheep, some sheep that are found in, uh, sheep. I mean, yes, yeah, some sheep found all over the world will have very high uh, species trends. And this was a study done uh, several years ago uh, when I was just in high school. Uh, I remember helping out with a study, very important study that was, that was taking place here. Um, and finally, uh, metapopulation. Very simple. Metapopulation is several different populations that are local that are linked together. Okay? Now, all that means is that, Mr. Jenkarelli, please focus. I'm trying to talk to you and have a very nice conversation with you here about very biology. Nice Thank you. Yes. So, all they're, they're linked together by different traits, different things that they share, like the land or the resources that they're competing for. So, now, very simple. Uh, one that I like to talk about all the time, Mr. Jack, really, please do not make eyes at me. I'm trying to have a conversation with you. I just express. I'm this just to you. playing with oh, you, Doctor. Just playing? Oh, no, just just playing, just playing. Is that the? Yeah, that's yeah, the way they do it yeah. these days. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. that way, dog, yeah. right, dog? Okay. Yeah, anyway, okay. so uh, the Glanville for Towery butterfly. Okay, this is a very good example. They're they're able to move all over the world. Sometimes they pop up in Ireland. Sometimes they pop up in. Bulgaria, for instance, I know Bulgarian people love their butterflies. Mr. Saxobeat! Mr. Saxobeat, I think, is actually, let me tell you right now, Mr. Saxobeat, number three song in Bulgaria right now. Mr. Very Saxobeat. Yes, Mr. Saxobeat. So, anyway, let me finish my example here. They like to immigrate and emigrate, in and out, in and out, in, in and, and out. out. They like to move around. Very simple, and because of that, the meta population size will change, the populations that they're linked with will change as well, because they are either there or not there. Mr. Jenkarelli, I believe this session is almost up, but one, one second, Mr. Jenkarelli, I forgot something. Mr. Jenkarelli, please put that phone away. But hold on a second. Mr. Jenkarelli, thank you very much. Mr. Jenkarelli, all I ask is some common courtesy. Oh, yes, yes. Thank you very much. Very now, the last and most important negative factor, negative feedback, I apologize, negative feedback mm -hmm. and regulation mm -hmm. is predation. Predation? Predation, yes, predatory action. Predatory action. That is correct, Mr. Giancarelli. Sounds fun. It, Explain more. Uh, fauna is not exactly the word I would use, but it's very important in populations. And what that means is other animals attacking uh, other animals or different plants using or eating other Wait, plants. Can humans be involved in predation? Um, um, like well, against each other? Uh, well, uh, um, I, I suppose, um, uh, yeah. Like the uh, the Italian mafia, I suppose. If they, uh, I think they call it that, taking care of business. Uh, I, I suppose that could classify as uh, negative feedback. Or certainly. Population control. Certainly, yes, yes. Hold on, Mr. Jenkarelli, please don't leave. We have to do protein synthesis in an animal. All of them do that. You've gotta be kidding me. Oh well. What's the matter with you? You seem pretty stressed. Some guy at the water docks didn't give me my money. I'm telling you, it's always the guys at the water docks. You know, they, they really are, and it's it's starting to piss me off, because I only... I worked so hard to get that money, and it's people bailing out on me. It's always those people. You know, you need to just take care of them. Sometimes they need to be hit. If the person wants to get hit, I'm gonna hit them. You can, all, you can only front so much. Yeah, you know, you know, you can only take so much with people. It's like ridiculous. It's hey, boss. I really like your hit. Why don't you go do something useful, alright? Okay, boss. 
You know, he does, he does his job. He can't control. At least he's a hard worker. He takes care of business when I ask him to. Right? He, he likes, likes good care. Hey, boss. Hey, what's going on? here to see you. All right, we'll bring him in. Who could bring him in? That way. But I'm not really in the mood to take your stuff now. Hey! That's the guy from the docks. Oh, this guy. Hey, take a seat, pal. Nice to meet you. Welcome to my household. Where's the money? He's speaking gibberish. I don't know what he's saying. Where's my money? Answer me the question. Where's my money? You know what? Take this thing out. Take this thing out. Take this thing out. I don't have any money, man. You don't have any money? You got no money. Well, you know what? You no owe money. me money. No money, no money. No money. Well, that's going to be a problem. Because where I come from, you owe me money, and that's going to be a problem. I don't owe nobody money, man. I don't owe nobody money. Where's my money? I ain't, I ain't got no g g g g g m money. Hey, boss, I ain't got no money. Where's the money? I ain't got no money. I ain't got no money. Put the ride back on. Put the ride back right. on. You know what? Take, take him out to the yard. We're gonna take him out to the yard. Why right. make it easy? Make it hard. Let's go. You and your little smarty friends. I'm gonna teach you a lesson I like to call population control. All right? Let's go. Take them. Take them. Let's go. I'm sorry, boss. Let's go. I'm tired of dealing with your stuff. Come on, man. Come on, buddy. Here we go. Come on. Here we go. All right. Here we go. This is what I call population control. Get in the trunk. Get in the trunk. Get in the trunk. There you, there you go. There you go. Now sleep tight, buddy. All right. Take it easy, man. Let's get the job done real quick. Waste of my day. I tell you, waste of my day. What the hell is that? Hey, keep it down in the back. Sheesh. Jesus Christ. I swear, if I get any blood on my clothes, I already did, boss. This guy's gonna pay for it. How you doing, buddy? Yo, yo, yo! What's the big idea? I'm anti bully, man! Let's get out of the car. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. My yeah. family doesn't believe in that. Whoa. What are you talking about? Hey, hey, See, I got this boy. pen right here. Whoa, what are you we doing with that bat, bat, man? Okay. What are you doing with that bat? What do you think I'm going to do with that bat? I, I, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm going to break your face. face. No, I, fact, I like I my face better the way it is. I'm going to break your legs. No, not my legs, man. I need them. I'm a football coach. Come on, man. Come on. Where's the money? I, what money? I ain't got no money. For the last time, where's the money? I'm I swear I'm going to break your legs. I ain't got no money. What are you talking about, man? He's I'm going to break your legs. He's got to be lying. Hold I the got, bat. I ain't Hold got no. What are Matter you doing? Matter of fact, give me the bat. You know, whoa, whoa, whoa. Break your whoa. Whoa. Oh, oh, get down. Yeah. Where's the money? I ain't got no money. Where's the money? No money, no money, no money. I ain't got none, man. Whoa. That's called population control right there. This thing on? Get it, get it. I'm Bruce Baustein. I'm Ben Matos, and you're not.
1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000. Sorry, you caught me doing my office workout. By the way, I'm Justin Smigler with On The Field Report. And it's time to report. Huh? Huh? Three watches. I got time all around the world. Hong Kong, Hoon Kong, Moon Kong, Shun Moon Doon Kong. And I'm Jimmy Jagarelli. And if you turn off this channel, you're gonna get hit with a brick in the back of the neck and you're gonna fall to the floor. Welcome to 42 Minutes. Mother Therese, my foot, for the love of God. Good morning, folks. I'm Jimmy Jagarelli, and welcome to 42 Minutes. We've got a great show for you today. It's all about population. In our first topic, we've got population growth. As you all know, it's growing very rapidly. So for more on this subject, let's go to our on-the-field reporter, Justin Smithley. Justin? Thanks, Jimmy. Today, I'm in the cold to talk to you about one thing, population. Back in the 1650s, there was a population of 650 million people. Then, in the 1930s, it grew to about 2 billion people. Then in 2008, 6.6 .6 billion people. The current estimates show that by 2050, the population will grow to an astonishing 10.8 billion people. That's a lot of mouths to feed. But currently, the growth rate for the global population has slowed to about 1.15% from the previous 2.2%. Now, give or take on a daily day, that's 200,000 people per day, which is 75 million people per year. And that's at our current rate which could fluctuate as time moves on. But it's starting to get cold, so I think I might get a cup of joe at a local business. Why don't you come join me? All right, so here we are at a local business to talk about immigration. Now, immigration is when people from one country move to another, which can be seen in our country from Britain, Czechoslovakia, Africa, the Ukraine. Now, here we are with a local, and let's, let's hear a little about yourself. My name's Stanley. Um, I'm from England. And you see, um, I came here when I was 15 years old, and my parents said that it would be a good idea to come here and um, get some good opportunities for my life. And uh, I thought I'd take them up on the offer, and um, I've been living here ever since. Uh, I moved here, I moved into uh, Virginia when I was 16, and came here about six months later. So, I mean, it's great, I like the economy. You know, it's, it's, it's going a little bit down here lately, but I think it's a good choice. I'm, I'm glad I am ready. And there you go, Jimmy. People here love it. Back to you. Thanks, Justin. Now, it's also important to know that immigration and immigration don't just apply to humans. They also apply to any other organism. All right? So now let's go to see who our winner of this week's raffle is. Let me see here. And congratulations to Mr. Ronald Clemson. You have won a free lifetime supply of chalk. There you go. All right, now let's go to Ben Matos and sports. To you, Ben. Thanks, Jimbo. Have you ever noticed there's a connection between population and sports? Well, there is. Like a sports team, take the 49ers, for example. The Niners had their great times with Joe Montana, and then all of a sudden went down the tubes. Eventually, they got back up. Alex Smith at the helm, they're getting there. Like bobcats and rabbits. Bobcats, they start to eat the rabbits. The rabbit's population goes down. But eventually the rabbit population goes up and bobcat's population goes down. It's a fluctuation in population. Get it? <laughs> Anyways, I'm Ben Matos, and you're not. Back to you, Jimbo. This just in, I'm not Ben Matos. But thanks, Ben. And it's important to note that most populations do fluctuate, but some remain constant. And this also just in, a school teacher has been reportedly assaulted by the Italian mafia. Well, you know what? That's a loan, right? This guy owed me money. I mean, I'm just saying, I mean, um, let's go to our interview with the interview of the day. Welcome, folks, to the interview of the week. Today, we have here with us an age expert and he's doing great with it. Look at him, still looking young. Mr. Baustein, Mr. Oh, Bruce oh, Baustein. Nice, nice to, to meet you, you today. Jimmy. Thank you. So I'm glad to have you here. Today we're gonna to talk oh, about a little I'm bit of population and your experience on aging and everything. 
I hope sounds, that's sounds, okay with sounds you. Sounds wonderful. First, we're going to start off with something, uh, life expectancy, and it's increasing. H how do you feel about that? Well, you know, life expectancy is increasing at a constant rate, and, you know, uh, whoa, whoa, looky here, looky here. And the life expectancy, it's, you know, it's increasing, but it puts a strain, because it's increasing, on the population. Definitely on the youth that and, need to support them. And the youth, exactly. And, you know, it puts an economic strain, and, and it puts a strain on the, the limited resources that we have. Exactly. That's great. So, I'm going to keep going with this topic. How do you feel about, you know, the age structure? You know about the baby boomers, which you were before their time, but that's okay. Um, there's a lot of them now entering in retirement, and there's not as many uh, younger people to support them in the economy. How do you feel about this? Right, well, you know, the baby boom, you know, back, we have World War II, and, and then all the soldiers come home, and it, you know, it causes an increase in the births, and, um, you know, the, the, the births, they, they, you know, now all these people who were born then, they're, they're retiring now, and they're, they're getting old, and they're putting, you know, a strain on the population. Uh, and, uh, you know, Social Security, you know, it, it's all issues. It's hard to support Social Security it, exactly. when there's so many people that need it, and so few people that support it. When they're all retiring, you know, it, it makes a problem here. Exactly. So we're going to switch it up a little bit now. Um, let's talk about the whole world. How do you feel if we were to ever uh, reach our carrying capacity? Obviously, it could be a problem. What do you feel like that would do to the countries? But you know, the carrying capacity—that's that's when the the uh, population uh, grows to a certain limit where the resources are are used to their fullest, and um, and the, that strain on a population, you know, it, it increases the the needs for items. There's a huge scarcity, and demand goes up. Uh, you know, supply is down, it, you know, we, we've got problems exactly. And here. there's obviously many reasons you could have such things as war, you know, the fight over the, the exactly. resources since they'd be sort of scarce and so many people need them. Even water Ca and food causes would be major problems. Major problems, definitely. So that's important to, to realize at some time where the c true carrying capacity of this earth is and how to try to, you know, incorporate our growth into how it could be sustainable. Really, that's the main point. Um, let's go on to something else, a little bit different. How do you feel about infant mortality rates? How do you think we can uh, help them, you know, help keep them low? As I know there's a lot of deaths in certain countries with infants. Well, you, you know, the, the World Bank, it, it classifies nations as uh, developing and uh, industrial. And you have the industrial nations, they, they have uh, good uh, scientific exploration and they have lots of medical advances. And then your developing nations, not so much. Mm -hmm. So, what needs to happen is the developing nations need to get some economic stimulus in like, there. Uh, to, you know, Keynesian economics? Keynesian economics. That, that's, that's the ticket there for these, these nations. And then they need to, you know, that spending will then cause scientific advancements, which will cause the, the uh, medical advancements, which will take care of uh, issues those resulting from rates. Yeah, you know, bring, infant those, mortality bring those back rates. down to such as countries in, in the United States and Japan where they have low infant mortality. Exactly. Rates. And people get to live as old as yourself. I mean, uh, that's, hopefully not. That's the but plan. It's okay. Um, uh, thank you, folks, for being here with us today. Mr. Bruce Baustein. Oh, it's been Thank a pleasure. You. Thank you. Back to you. To a lemonade stand, and he said to the man running the stand, Hey, bum, 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 got any grapes? Got any grapes? Oh, you just gotta love senior citizens, right? Now, one thing not mentioned in the interview was your ecological footprint. Now, your ecological footprint is the amount of land and resources a person needs to survive. Right now, that's about five acres per person. So it's important to keep that in mind when we're talking about the Earth's carrying capacity. Now, this just in, Ernest G. Hemingway has won the Nobel Prize for writing the world's longest thesis statement. It is so long that no one can finish it. Wow. Now, let's go to two other factors that affect the density of a population that we haven't covered yet. Disease and intrinsic factors. Now, disease is just an illness that a population gets and causes them to go Doo! down, such as the Black Plague. Now, the Black Plague was spread through rats and it just affected the humans 
by killing them all. They killed off a third of the population. Imagine that. A third of the people around you just gone. Yeah, crazy, right? Now, the other one are intrinsic factors. Now, intrinsic factors are really hormonal changes, right? Such as roids rage. So they can affect the population, the density of a population, by, you know, if everyone, so if someone goes on a roids rage and starts killing people, well, that, that's in the factor, that's going to affect the density of the population by sending it once again down. Now, anything else to other say? I don't know. Well, I think, you know what? Just make sure you line up the door, get the class on time. And that's all from the newscast at 42 minutes. See you later, Strasburg. Stay classy. All right, hey guys, um, what's up? Uh, this is Justin Smigley, and I want to let you know that I uh, I put this video together, and you know, Jimmy and all them they don't they don't know I put this in here, so this is my chance to say all the negative things I have to say. For one, I had such a fun time with you guys putting this together. All the laughs we shared, um, I had so much fun over the past about I probably have to say a good 18 hours putting this together um, I have to say I've had so much fun watching the reruns of the uh, the bloopers and um, you know as a matter of fact I'll show them to you right now What are you looking at? Oh, you want the bloopers? Why couldn't you just say so? Alright, cue the bloopers! I'm talking to you about the so oh, I don't even know what I'm saying right like <laughs> now. in 2000, oh crap. Station <laughs> explosion. In 19, oh, wait. Thanks, Jim. Today we're going to be talking about puck. <laughs> there was about 1.8. Is that right? 1% or... 650 million people on this continent. Country. 2.2. You almost. I thought, I thought you were gonna die. <laughs> I thought you were gonna die. Yeah. I'm still living. Yeah. You gotta say action. What is this? <laughs> what are my Martin Scorsese over here? <laughs> Look, like Steven Spielberg just go. <laughs> All right. Action. So that's business on the water dogs doing for you. Hey, it's doing all right. I mean, not the major. One guy bailed out on his money. I swear if I find him, I'll rough him up. Dude, it's always the people at the water dogs. You can never get a break. Sorry. But <laughs> 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 oh my god! This is my action. So that's business on the water dogs. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Put your stuff together. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's do this. <laughs> Shut up, you can't do that after one time. <laughs> Put your stuff together. Let's go. <laughs> Shut that up! <laughs> yeah, that's what I was doing. <laughs> Ding! First take. What are you, T-Bone? Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> let's go! Hey, boss. I really like your hair. Why don't you go do something useful? Why? Right? Okay, boss. Mm. <laughs> He's like, I really don't like these guys in the wood What is this, Oprah? <laughs> 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 Wait a second. He doesn't have his thing on his mouth. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I forgot. I thought he was supposed to be from Take the rag out of his mouth. You got it, boss. I ain't got no money, man. No money, no money, no money. No money, you say? Yeah. Yeah, but you owe me money. So that's going to be a problem. I ain't got no money, man. I paid for my Lexus 20 years ago. <laughs> Am I supposed to follow him? I never got to that part. Is that a ramp? Oh, by the way, the battery died 10 minutes ago. <laughs> Hey guys, it's uh. 9.09 um, the day before you're seeing this and I'm just putting up some of the final touches 
I've been working on this like, well, for now it's been like two hours, but I was doing it four hours before the two hours. And, um, so I mean, you can kind of see what I got going here. So, you know, I'm working on it. And then you got over here all the files and stuff. Hey, hey, Alex. How's it going? That's Bruce Palestine. And that's Ben Matos. So, um,. I just want to say, you know, I had a lot of fun doing this project. Um, I was honored to be a part of it. And overall, I uh, can't wait to see what you guys think. And, you know, it's taught, it's taught me a lot, um, especially in, like, learning stuff and facts about populations and just, I don't know, logistics and all these just random kind of, I guess you could say, like, science stuff. But um, I think the biggest part is I learned to cooperate with people and to just enjoy, just enjoy time itself and understand it. Understand that, you know, sometimes when life throws things in the way, like my printer that just went off, you just have to learn to smile and just in, uh, enjoy what you're given because you don't know how long, how long you'll have it. So thank you guys for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. See ya.